Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogar and the stock market sell-off to start the year has brought back comments that investing is no better than gambling. Tech stocks in the Nasdaq are down more than 15% and investors have lost 30 or 40% and more in some of those high-flying growth stocks. And that can amount to thousands in losses, even in a relatively small portfolio. Compare these huge losses to the house edge in blackjack that can be as low as 0.28%, which means you're likely to win 49 times out of 100 and are bound to hit a few hot streaks. And that means even on the house advantage and playing $100 hands, it would take you over 3,500 hands of blackjack to lose just $1,000, and that's not counting a lot of free drinks. In this video, I'll show you how investing is similar to gambling, but the critical differences that make stocks the better bet. I'll reveal the trap that turns investing into a gamble and three ways to put the odds in your favor. Before we get started though, you know I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I wanna thank Wealthfront for sponsoring this video. The features on the app can help you make investing less like a gamble, combining the power of automated investing with customization options you just won't find on other robo-advisors. It takes less than five minutes to get started and Wealthfront is gonna take your answers to some simple questions about your investing goals and suggest a diversified portfolio of low-cost index funds. And what I really like about Wealthfront is the level of customization it gives you. You can adjust the overall risk in your portfolio or even the amount in individual funds by moving these sliders to adjust the percentage of your money in each. Wealthfront makes it easy to see all your accounts, from accounts on different investment goals like retirement or general investing, and even linking your external accounts and credit cards to see your net worth and how much you owe. The minimum to get started on Wealthfront is just $500 with an annual fee of 0.25% but you can get $5,000 managed for free when you sign up using the link below. I'll leave a link to Wealthfront in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Now, there are some similarities between gambling and investing, but it's in the concept rather than the execution. Both gambling and investing involve risking your money in the hope of a profit. In both, the investor or the gambler is looking to minimize the risk and maximize the return. But then that's where the similarities end and the differences come in. In gambling, there are very few ways to minimize or even control that risk. Investors have ways of hedging their bets that just aren't possible in gambling. In stocks, you can invest in different types of companies so that some do well even as others are struggling. For example, you might invest in stocks of utilities companies that can do well even if economic growth slows and interest rates fall, while also investing in bank stocks that do better when interest rates rise or on rise on stronger growth. Investors can also sell call options against their stocks to reduce the risk and even eliminate it altogether by buying a put option. In gambling though, if you put $100 in your faith that the Patriots can carry a perfect season through January and then you watch Brady bumble a 12 point spread and the Giants take the trophy with just 35 seconds left in the game, oh, that money is gone. There's also no house advantage in investing as there is with gambling. Every casino has a built-in advantage for the house. Play enough times and statistically, you will lose money. Even for stock traders, which is different from that long-term investing we talk about, you're still buying and selling against traders with the same public information as you have. The key difference though, why investing is not gambling, is that in long-term investing anyway, those stocks make you an owner of a business and capital creation. You're not trading your money for one-off bets that are gonna win or lose, but actually profiting from the growth in a business. That is the key that so many people miss. Investing is not a bet whether you make money or not. It's every person's opportunity to get the profits from a business without having to manage it themselves. Now that said, investors are sometimes their own worst enemy, and there are ways of making investing more like gambling. Many investors are actually trading stocks instead of investing, whether they know it or not. They trade in and out of the same stock in a matter of weeks or even days, never giving the company that time to generate the profits for its investors. Nation, if you aren't holding a stock for at least a year, you're not an investor, but a stock trader. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you're gambling, but you need to be using a trading plan rather than just flitting from stock to stock. Another way investors fall into that gambling trap is they jump from hot stock to hot stock, buying on that recommendation from some Yahoo and a bow tie without doing any research. They put all their money into just a few stocks they hear about online and eventually they lose it all. Even on a few bad years in stocks, investing is still the best way to grow your money and there are three ways to put the odds even further in your favor. First, and this is something every investor needs to hear right now, is dollar cost averaging. That's when you effectively change the price you pay for a stock by investing at different times. For example, if you bought 10 shares of Apple at its December peak of $180 each, you'd be down 11% by the end of January. 
But if you bought another 10 shares at the lower $160 each, your average cost for that investment would now be just $170 per share. Do this over a long enough period and you take that risk of a short-term crash totally out of the picture. You may have invested at the height of prices, but you've also bought shares at the bottom. That's actually the hidden opportunity in a stock market crash, the opportunity to get those stocks at a discount that, that I think a lot of investors are just overlooking right now. Another way to make investing less like gambling is to hold your stocks longer. Data from the New York Stock Exchange and shared on Visual Capitalist shows the average holding period for stocks has fallen to just five and a half months recently. That's well under the eight years average investors held stocks back in the 1950s. Five and a half months, that's not investing but stock trading. In periods of less than a year, that investor sentiment and the market direction are so much bigger factors on a stock's price. If investors sour on stocks or if the overall market dives, I don't care how great a company it is, its shares are gonna suffer as well. So plan on holding your stocks for at least five years. Give those companies time to increase their profits and the value of that ownership in the company. The third here is using diversification to spread your risk around and smooth out those ups and downs in individual stocks. Now, diversification is the concept in investing in different assets like stocks, bonds, and real estate, and then different types of investments within each of those. For example, in stocks, you might buy stocks of companies in different sectors of the economy. And because the different asset classes or the stocks in different sectors react differently to the economic forces, that means the returns on each don't really track each other perfectly. Your bond investments won't crash along with stocks, and your stocks in safer sectors like utilities or, or consumer staples may not fall as hard as tech stocks when they do crash. It all helps to smooth out that roller coaster ride that is stock investing. Check out Wealthfront and get a special sign up bonus with the link below, or click on the video to the right for the five Vanguard funds ranked by highest return, five ETFs to start your portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.